Thanks, Maddie and Rachel. I'm Ria. I'm a product manager working on GitHub Copilot. And today I'm joined by Zoe and Oscar, some incredible engineers working on Visual Studio's agentic experience. And we're really excited to show you all of the enhancements that we've made over the last couple months. Um, you know, this year has been really focused on making um, AI accessible and um, help you accelerate your code from your ideas to working code to getting you to deployed code all with different agents. You know, we've added a bunch of agenting experiences across testing, profiling to make sure that you can improve your performance of your application, modernizing your applications with like .NET upgrades, as well as deploying to Azure, and a bunch more that you have seen today and we'll see throughout the rest of the sessions. But today, we're really excited to focus on just the core experience of getting from an idea to code, working code super fast with agent mode. We released previously a couple months ago, and we've gotten so much awesome feedback from you all. And so we're really excited to show you all of the advancements we've made throughout this. And who's better to kick us off than some of the engineers that worked on it? Kick us off, Zoe. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Zoe. I'm a software engineer on the Copilot NVS team. And today for our demo, we're going to work on a simple mood tracking app here. Uh, it, I can log my mood. I'm feeling pretty happy today. And we can look at the history. Now, I do want to acknowledge that most of us work on gnarly, complex enterprise code bases. Uh, but for the purpose of a simple 25-minute demo, we picked an easy app that's you know, easy to follow and work on. Cool. Now, back in Visual Studio, what I want to do is look at which GitHub issues I have open in my repo. So to do that, I'm going to use the GitHub MCP server and enable the list issues tool call over here. Great. Uh, now I'll send my prompt to Copilot to tell me which GitHub issues do I have open. Wait, so I can access my GitHub issues from Visual Studio? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we support the full MCP spec, and you can connect to multiple external knowledge bases like GitHub, Azure DevOps, Jira, Figma, whatever it is. Um, and we support a lot, so we know that your connection to GitHub is secure. And it's open source. You can create your own if you want. You want to add your knowledge bases from your company, you can do, do that. Yep, exactly. Uh, well, awesome. Looks like uh, the model went and queried our issues from the GitHub repo. Looks like I have something to make the web page accessible, uh, build a backend, add weather data, and create a mood calendar. Uh, let's look at the very first issue over here, which is to make the mood selector component accessible and add some HTML elements and ARIA attributes. So I'm going to send in my next prompt to the model, which is to address this accessibility issue. Uh, but to do that, I want to pull in the latest guidelines on accessibility from Microsoft Learn. To do that, I will now enable the Microsoft Learn MCP server, which can fetch documentation. Now, with this latest information, I will tell Copilot to make the necessary changes and at the same time, I want to update the HTML instructions MD file to always take into account accessibility guidelines. All right, let's send this prompt over. Wait, so you can, what, what is the HTML instructions that you referred to before? That's a great question. So we support custom instructions, which uh, you can provide instructions to Copilot per file extension or your repo wide, so that Copilot will always keep that in mind whenever it's working on those specific files or your entire repo. Oh, that's really cool. So if I have like XML comments I like writing a particular way, I just add them there and yep. it does that? Yeah, that's exactly. Cool. You that's can cool. also check it into your repo if you want your entire team to follow it. Oh, that's really neat. I'm going to try it. Awesome. Let's look at what Copilot is doing right now. Looks like it pulled in the latest accessibility guidelines from Microsoft Learn. Uh, it, you know, did a doc search and it's modifying the mood selector component. Awesome. Uh, let's see. It added some like screen reader labels and such. Uh, awesome. And let's see if it modified the instructions file. Great. It added five, you know, simple instructions like I told it to. Uh, and it also summarized everything that it did. This is great. So it went from like retrieving the information from your MCP server from online about your standards. It went and executed that in your repo and it added instructions so that you don't really have to worry about it again. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and like, this is really cool when you want to work with it. So like you could add, like you could add more and iterate with this, but I wonder, like there are so many issues that we have to deal with for this application. Like, how do you do all of them together? That's a great question. So sometimes I want to iterate with Copilot to make the changes that I need to. And other times, I just want to let Copilot you know, figure 
uh, how to solve an issue on its own. So I'm going to enable this tool called Assign Copilot to Issue. And I will send off the mood calendar issue that we saw earlier to Copilot. And what this is going to do is on github.com, it will tell Copilot to work on this issue. And Copilot will then start working on a PR that then I can interact with. Uh, this works out really well for well-spec'd out uh, issues and designs that you have. All right, looks like it uh, assigned it the issue. Now we'll go back to my PRs and see if it has created the draft PR. Wonderful, it just created the draft PR that's still in work in progress. Uh, we'll come back and take a look at it later. I have a quick question before we uh, end off here. How do you determine when you want to use this coding agent mm -hmm. or you want to work with agent mode? Yeah, that's a great question. So when I'm working on a pretty complex issue or if I don't have something that's like fully spec'd out, I will use Copilot as a guide or like as assistance while I'm building on it, while I'm iterating on it and so on. But if I have a simple, straightforward issue that's like, you know, pretty well detailed, if I have Figma designs for it, I'll just assign it to Copilot and see how it comes up with uh, like a PR. And, you know, I still have the opportunity to iterate on it. I can leave comments on the PR, Copilot will go address it, and it can still be back and forth. But I can work on multiple things at the same time like this. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we'll hand it over to Oscar, who's going to show how he uses Copilot to iterate over some work. Of course, yeah. Thanks, Ria. Those are pretty cool demos. Um, and I'm, I have my own demo to show as well. Um, I'm going to be using the same prototype. Uh, and I got to say, I really like this prototype. It, it does what a prototype is supposed to, right? It shows a core idea, like functionalities, everything works. But it takes a few shortcuts, right? Because it's, it's just a prototype. We kind of like bite coded this in a few minutes. <laughs> so uh, the thing it's doing right now is like every, every data it stores, it uses the local browser storage, right? Like it, it's not going anywhere. It's just staying there. So let's take it to the next step. Let's see if we can move it to like uh, maybe have a data layer in the cloud. And I'm going to use Azure just, you know, it's kind of like what I'm familiarized with. But I don't know, like, what would be the best option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ask Copilot and see if, like, he can help me, like, compare the options I have. And I should have enabled the same uh, MCP server for Microsoft documentation, so it should be able to fetch actual real-time data. And, like, you know, even, like, if I'm lucky, it's going to be able to tell me, like, how much it's going to cost each of them. So totally. that's pretty useful. That's cool. It's doing parallel tool calls as well. It can retrieve information at the same time. Yep. Yeah, it's all going to the context that we sent uh, to the model. So. Awesome. And let's see. So it starts already start giving me some recommendations. And wow. Lots of recommendations. Yep. Oh, yep. I like this table that it's got. Yep. Yeah. It's like even comparing like each of them next to each other. And I already saw what I want. Like, I mean, I'm a simple guy. I see Azure table storage and I'm like, okay, let's use that. It's like sure. it was the easiest thing I can do. And it's if easy to run locally and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and since I already know I want Azure table storage, I want it to help me go through it, right? Like I wanna help me update my project so that it has like a way for me to run and have everything I need for it to deploy into the cloud, right? So and that way you can share your yeah. like mood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what I want to do here, uh, and I want to kind of like emphasize, uh, there is, I'm asking it to like create and execute a plan. And I have here, like one of the uh, tools I have enabled is actually called planning. And I don't know, like, have you ever heard about planning? I actually have. Um, let's run in. Let's yeah. let's see. So planning is this new preview feature that we have, and it basically what it allows Copilot to do is obviously it goes looks through your files, figures out what files it needs to edit, and it'll even things it needs to do based on your prompt. And then it will go ahead and generate a, a like um, some like a plan. It will basically use a scratch pad to then uh, figure out what it needs to do and then render it in a markdown file for you to follow and track, which is pretty neat. And it will continue to utilize those steps. There we go. Um, to, to actually stay on track and make sure that it's able to redirect when needed. So it actually even continues to update and reassess the plan to see if this is still working so that it can give you a higher quality response. Yep. So as a developer, like this is the moment where I just grab the popcorn, you know, yeah. and start looking at Copilot, go Copilot, right? <laughs> uh, so it should be able to like follow each of the plans, like plan steps you mentioned. Um, and it's going to keep uh, iterating over it, right? So. Yeah, I like the emerge users like checking it off mm -hmm. and working on it. Yep. Kind of yep. Nice. It updates and it goes. So 
There you go. Wow, it's working pretty fast. I've noticed that like even the code mapping, like whenever it's editing a file, it's been a little faster. Yes, exactly. There's been a lot of work going on there actually. Like um, for the past few months, we've been using a strategy that actually rewrites the entire document, but it usually gets slower the larger the document is because, you know, we have to like generate all those tokens. Right. Uh, but lately we've been upgraded to like uh, the new models are have more capabilities in like using specific tools to edit special parts of the file instead of like the entire thing. Oh. So that's like way, way faster, especially when you're dealing with like uh, large documents, like a thousand line plus. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a, a huge difference. So yeah, that kind of like supercharges the experience with uh, agent mode. That's really cool. And what's really great about agent mode as well is it continues to iterate. So it'll, it'll look for um, errors and it'll look for, mm -hmm. it'll even validate that this, this is all working code with the build. So you have the to-do list, you have like the constant feedback of whether or not something has worked that Copilot can use to continue to iterate until it can get to your goal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like it, it, if it modifies a file, if it checks if it has errors, if it finds errors, you like reiterate. Like exactly. It has this ability of like recovering from failure, which yes. is pretty, pretty useful. So, and I can see it's almost done here. It's probably on this last step. You know, you talked about models and I just wanted to point out, we have a bunch of models in Visual Studio. We actually, as of today, also have auto, which so if you are curious or you don't know what model to use, select that and we can like help define, choose for you. Uh, we have ones from OpenAI, from Anthropic, Google, and even XAI now. Yep, and you can even bring your own key if you want. Like we have all these providers, like wow. if you wanna use your own model, maybe you deploy your own fine-tuned model, like yeah. you know, up to that level, you have your own key. You can just like replace that layer from MVS like to use uh, the model you want to use. That's really awesome. There are so many niche models I love oh, trying, so this is super helpful. Yep. Cool. Oh, cool. So let's see how good it's doing. Uh, so I can see it already generated like so many um, uh, documents. It's edited others, and this is just one iteration, right? Like this is like one interaction where we're getting all these kind of like organized changes. And I gotta say, planning has a lot to do with it, knowing like how to do it, right? So it seems it's already completed. So let's take a look and, and see how our app is doing. It does seem still changing a few things here and there, uh, but- uh, The build ran successfully too, so oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, for me, that means it works, right? So <laughs> let's try it out. Um, I'm going to, uh, actually before I run it, I know I noticed we created a new server, right? So. I think we need to run the server first. So I'm going to go ahead and come here. And while you do that, you know, Zoe, I noticed something before about what you were working on. You were like mm -hmm. adding tools, like as you are going, I generally just keep all my tools on. So like, do you have any recommendations? Like, should I be doing that? Yeah, that's a really good question. So. If you look at some of these MCP servers, there might be like 40, 50 tools in a single server. And if you have multiples of them enabled, you might have 100 tools enabled. And each time you send a request, you're sending 100 tools worth of tool definitions, parameter like descriptions every single time to the model. So you're consuming more tokens out of your context window. Uh, the model has to now process these additional tokens, so it's going to be a little slower. Also, if you provide too many tool options to the models, uh, it might get confused or hallucinate between them. So I think, in my opinion, it's best practice to just like select the specific tools that you think you're going to be using um, to have the best results. Wow. So, OK, so make it more deterministic, most likely, if yep. I remove my tools. Yep. I'm yep. going to go home and just untick every single one today. Yeah. And yeah. just remember to enable the ones that you want, though. That's a yeah. good point. <laughs> Tip for everyone at home. How are we doing, Oscar? We're doing fine. I think yep. it just forgot like to change the uh, into development, oh, okay. but let's see, let's see if now that works. Uh, and now twenty two three one. Oh, let me refresh this. Actually, let's see if it updated because I didn't have a chance to check like all the code it was doing. So it's probably pointing to an URL that it shouldn't be pointing to. Uh, and I think I should be able to see it in the mood storage service, which is the part that actually calls the, the, actually the API here. And here it is, here's the problem. So it's trying to just uh, directly uh, call into the same port, right? right? So what we need to do here is we need to change this to use our development um, API here. 
let's see if that solves it. Um, otherwise, I can always ask Copilot to solve it for me. Fingers crossed. So, okay, now it seems like it's storing data now. So maybe I can just refresh here. I see my table. Oh. And I see my data. So yeah, I was anxious before this run, but now I'm happy that it worked. <laughs> so. That's really cool to see. And this is like a really good example of how you want to work with agent mode. Like, you know, you constantly, like what, with agent mode, you want to iterate. You're not always going to get there in the first try, but that's the point you're like working with it. You might be prompting or you might be investigating through the actual files like you were today um, to get to where you want. Now, I imagine that you would probably want to make even more changes before you actually push this out. Is that correct? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, like, this code is not production ready, right? Like, I'm pretty sure Sui would not approve this piece. Yeah, okay. So uh, you always, like, yeah, at least got me to the 80%, right? right? I just need to make sure the quality value is there. And that's, you know, the last 20%, which is what, you know, differentiates. I guess. But it makes you a lot faster, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, it would take me days to do this, right? And yeah. I was like, just a few minutes. So Vibed it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and you know, so we thank you so much for your demo. We saw some age, uh, so we saw a bunch of demos for agent mode. We even saw you using remote um, coding agent. Uh, Zoe, could you show us a little bit about where our PR is for it? Oh yeah, looks like uh, Copilot is still working on it. It's still marked as work in progress, but it built a plan out and it's like Checking going it through on. it. Let's see, it summarized the changes. Oh, cool, it added some screenshots for the calendar view. We love that. We love PRs with screenshots. And yeah, it, it's looking good. I will review this PR and leave comments as I see fit. That's really cool. I really like the fact that it like takes photos so that like I can validate if like it looks good enough to like even look at. But even with something like this, you kind of want to like have it in your system so that you can validate it with all of the tools of Visual Studio. And over the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll be integrating this agent even more deeply into Visual Studio. So you'll be able to bring down your PR from this and view it, even interact with Copilot at mentioning it in comments and continuing to iterate there and using all the powerful testing tools that we have available for you to even validate that this PR is really good. And uh, in addition to that, without even using the MCP server, you'll be able to access Coding Agent directly from v Visual Studio Chat. Uh, we're really excited about this. Um, so these are a bunch of the experiences that we have to help you accelerate your coding experience. Um, and we have a bunch of other things that we didn't get through today because there's so many incredible AI features in VS. Um, here are a couple of my favorite agents and some of the tools I recommend utilizing. So um, please try them out and look at other sessions to see some of the other experiences shown. Um, and if you're getting started with AI, I know many people are still working through that. First thing I want you to do, install the latest version of Visual Studio. We just announced it today. We want to hear your feedback. We're super excited about it. And we're updating super frequently. So if you want the latest and greatest AI features, you'll get them right in the new version of Visual Studio. Um, if you're curious about how to utilize some of this and or like even see more content um, from our team, check out our YouTube channel. And you know, continue to provide us feedback. We look at your DevCom tickets and your comments every day um, <laughs> at 9.30. So please, please give them in. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest stuff that we're doing in the roadmap, or you want to interact with us on uh, social media, we're also looking at that. So um, this is how you get started. We're really excited for you to try it out. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your .NET Conf. And I guess AI. 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 <laughs> AI. <laughs>